Hey everybody, it's Al again and I wanted to uh, do a quick video on uh, how to do battery maintenance and check things out, make sure everything's going well. Um, you know, take, taking good care of your batteries is essential. I have uh, these batteries that are three years old and they're going strong. Uh, and I also have some other batteries that are over five years old or four, four to five years old and they're also going strong. And that's because, you know, you have to do maintenance to them. Uh, I check them uh, two to three times a year. Uh, depending on how much use I uh, I put on them, twice a year is uh, usually more than enough. Um, check the water levels, check the specific gravity, make sure there you know the there's no corrosion on the post, and make sure you kind of clean the tops off. So that's essentially what battery maintenance is. So why is battery maintenance important? Well, if you look at that battery here, uh, this battery is from '09, from November of 2009. So uh, that is uh, what uh, we are on 13 or 14 right now so it's been four years and change now uh, almost four and a half years and these are just regular lead acid batteries you have to pop the caps and check the water and so on but you can see that there's no corrosion on them because I use uh, corrosion preventative compound is a spray that you uh, you put on them and you have to check the water and so on. But if you do your, your battery maintenance at regular intervals and you keep them right, uh, you can expect a long life of your batteries. These batteries are in perf perfect condition, uh, going on five years old, okay? And so these batteries here that we're gonna uh, do maintenance on are three years old right now. So all you have to do to do maintenance is really just take the cap off. You can see they're pretty filthy because they get dirty with you know just being uh, out in the shed and things dropping on it and then when you service them you always spill a little bit of water so that kind of makes it up and makes a, a muddy mix but essentially you need a hydrometer which is this device right here you just stick it in the cell draw from it and if it's in the green it's good so this is a good battery it's three years old and you check every cell and so if the batteries are in good condition and they are in the green uh, well, if they are in the green, they are in good condition, and you can continue using them. So we have good batteries at this point, and this is the set that I have used the most in the in the past. So I would have expected this battery to start, uh, you know, showing some signs of age, but I've done low testing on them, and they are perfect. So I'm quite happy with the performance of the batteries at this point, and it's all due to. You know, careful usage, never draw more than 50% of the power from them, and certainly never, um, you know, leave them discharged, uh, you know, overnight or for any period of time, if you ever do actually discharging more than 50%, and uh, never let the uh, battery level go below uh, the top of the plates, which you can kind of see down here, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So to maintain your battery's uh, water level, you want distilled water, so you can see that right here. Uh, you cannot use drinking water or any other kind of water, it has to be distilled water. And then you want to put it in a battery servicing uh, filler uh, like this. You really unscrew the top here. Excuse me, I'm trying to do this one-handed because I don't have uh, my camera broke so I'm using my phone. And fill it up, screw it back in, and then uh, go ahead and uh, put it down on the battery cell. Push down on it and you'll hear a gurgle. And when it stops gurgling, your cell is topped off. Now we need it a little bit. And you go to this one and you're good. So that's it. That's all it takes. Uh, it's very easy to maintain these batteries. Uh, there's no real science behind it. Then you go ahead and grab the cap carefully, not to touch the, uh, the part that is sold with um, uh, acid and go ahead and put that on and then you follow on with the with the next battery and so on. I'm going to go ahead and cover this one and just get it out of the way and I'm going to show you essentially uh, what you do next. You can see there's a little bit of corrosion on this terminal here so what you want to do is you want to get a wire brush and you want to wire brush that terminal really well, clean it up, clean all the gunk out of it and uh, make sure that there's no appreciable corrosion on it uh, and you're going to do the same thing with the cables before you plug the cables back in there. Now you're going to see also that there's a little spot here uh, where when you put the caps on it's close to the post. So what I'll do is I take the battery cap off, I reverse it, 
and now this side is closer to the one that I just did and I have room to work in over here so just clean that up make sure you knock out all of the corrosion and you're pretty much done at that point all you have to do is grab an old rag and start wiping your battery down so uh, wiping the top of the battery is important because you have acid residue in here that will creep up to your thermals eventually cause more corrosion and it's also uh, you know kind of difficult to work on the batteries if you have you know dirt and grime and, and acid all over them so uh, what I like to do is I like to stick the uh, the t-shirt underneath here and just kind of draw back and forth like that and then that gets it nice and clean so you do that and then you're pretty much done with the battery maintenance. I will show you uh, how to do the cables next so you can see what that looks like. Alright so here are some cables. Here's the cables that are removed from that battery bank and you can see here's one. Let me see if it'll if I can get uh, there we go. You can see the corrosion on this cable right here and uh, you can see that it flakes off. You see that material here and so that's corrosion and it's on both sides. So we want to go ahead and we want to clean all of the cables uh, you can use the same wire brush. In my case, I have a grinder with a wire wheel, so we're just going to turn that guy on. And we are going to clean it. And you got to also remember to clean the edge. Make sure that you don't miss that. Clean both sides pretty well. And you do that for every end of every cable, and when you're done, you can nice, you get a nice clean cable that you can put on there. Um, so the next thing that I will show is the battery connections, and then I'll show you how to uh, apply the corrosion preventative compound. So that would then finish your battery maintenance, and you'd have a good battery bank that could last you years and years. So this is the uh, corrosion preventative compound for the batteries. Uh, you just buy a can of that stuff and uh, spray the terminals and it's kind of reddish looking don't know if you can see that uh, but that's that's what it looks like uh, so we're all done or I'm all done with the battery maintenance you can see down here uh, the entire battery bank is now wired so I have uh, those four batteries in series 24 volts going down to these four here uh, for a total of 48 so that's one series circuit and then there is the other uh, series uh, circuit uh, for the other eight batteries and then uh, a connection in parallel you can see from one bank to the other one so there's a co negative connection from this bank to the negative connection on that other bank and then from there there's another wire there that ties it together uh, over here uh, to uh, the common for all the batteries and the wire that goes ultimately to the inverter. Uh, the uh, positive cable, which as you can see now, it has been selected to number one to select that battery back, uh, actually comes out of the end of this battery. So I'm drawing from one end of the bank to the other end of the other bank. And so I get to draw power from the entire battery bank. So that's uh, uh, 48, two 48 volt banks in series right now. I'm just doing that one because that needs charging. And we can see that uh, there is some charging going on. Uh, well, the charger right now is zero because I'm not using the charging from here. It's using the charge controllers from the solar panel. So but what we can see here is that we're inverting 300 watts here uh, of power. Uh, you can see that we're buying 600 watts right now. Uh, it's still early in the morning. The sun is just uh, barely out. Uh, we're, uh, the output voltage is 124 volts. Um, we're inverting 3 uh, amps at 120 volts. And uh, uh, you can see here that uh, the AC loads are almost uh, one kilowatt uh, and that is out of the inverter itself. When we come over here you see that the uh, uh, the metrics are a little different so right now we are producing 1.6 or 1.26 kilowatts from this array 
and uh, 0.2 kilowatts essentially from this other array here. And so most of that is going to charge that battery back down here because that was at 47.8 uh, volts, which is slow, so that needs to come up to 52 volts. And the charge controllers are doing their job. So anyways, that's it. I uh, hope you uh, learned something from it. Uh, this is, uh, you know, our safety net in case the power fails or something catastrophic happens. We have enough power here to run the house without any sun or wind for over a week uh, using both uh, banks. And so that's, um, you know, our emergency um, standby power. God bless everybody. Thanks for watching. Take care.